continuing with our discussion today on everything happens in God's perfect timing, I want to lay the groundwork a little bit more to share some spiritual nuggets, some spiritual soul food with you to let you know, my brothers and sisters in Christ, to do not fear when God's direction takes a turn you do not understand. I was actually talking to evangelists about that a few minutes ago during our commercial break. And just I just want you to know that he is completely trustworthy. Even if you don't understand, don't know how this happened, uh, what's going on. Uh, this is not the way I, this is not what I've been praying for, all this stuff that we be saying. But believe God's promises to you. He's able to bring them to pass even though you may not see how it's going to happen. Amen. Avoid striving to fulfill God's promises in your own strength. Today, there is just too much microwave faith, meaning that you give God at least one minute to do something. And minute number two, you taking it into your own hands. Doing so always results in self-induced problems that we bring upon our own selves. We, you know, we got to stop giving the devil so much credit. People do. Everything that happens to them, they blame the devil. If you're out there committing adultery or doing whatever, or you're robbing a bank, okay, what does the devil have to do with you? You're the one decide to get a weapon, you go out there and do decision. that. That's right. You the one knowing that this person been married twenty five years, and just because you uh, they said hello and you look pretty, you decide that you're gonna make some decisions to be intimate with them. So let's stop giving the devil. All, no, the devil does his work. One thing we can give him credit for, he does not take any breaks. That's for sure. <laughs> but but he is not everywhere at the same time doing. Now God is everywhere all the time. Let's stop giving him all this credit. The devil made me do it. The devil did not make you do it all the time. Uh, then in case uh, uh, you're wondering why is this happening to me? Remember that God's provisions are strategically located along the pathway of faithfulness, obedience from you, you, and only you. You're accountable for the decisions that you make. See, you're accountable for the decisions. It's up to you what decisions you make, whether to follow God or to do what you want to do. Like, uh, it's my thing. I do what I want to do. Or believe and trust God and know that he is working it out for you in his perfect timing. It's all about you because if you decide that I'm going, the, my, it's my way, the byway or whatever like that. And you not seek God for direction. Any and everything can happen, including losing your life. So we want to follow God and let him speak to us and lead and guide us in all things. Amen. Now, some things are just simply put in our way to call forth courage and faith. Let us be reminded God's word in Romans 10, 17, which says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, which brings me to this question. Who are we listening to? Evangelist Bambi. Amen. I'm sorry, Evangelist Jones. Who are we listening to? Who is pouring uh, all this garbage, disbelief and doubt into us about what God's promises are? What can none of us do, uh, which can be none other than Satan, our enemy and the prince of darkness, because without faith, it is impossible. Impossible. It is impossible to please God without faith. We have to have the faith, even just if it's faith of a mustard seed. Now, evangelist, you want to take us from there? Well, you're talking about what's on your mind, your thoughts, and what are you thinking about? You know, because that's the birthplace. You start thinking on it, mm -hmm. and then you want to act on it. Do so you act on it? Yeah. That's right. mm -hmm. And then Isaiah 55, it talks about, the Lord says, My thoughts are not like yours. Your ways are not like mine. Just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. He, and in Philippians, he says, think on those things that are good, that are pure of good report. Yes. So we yes. got to go back to the mind and what yes. you're thinking on. Yeah, what, what do you, you have on your mind? Yeah. Because the enemy doesn't have any power. What he does is what we give him. 
See, he's not like God. He's not omniscient. He's not omnipresent and he's not omnipotent. So he's not all powerful, all knowing, and he's not everywhere, but he deals with us according to what we speak out of our mouth yes. and our actions. And so we give him insight as to what we're thinking. thinking. And so now he wants to play on that. That's right. Okay. That's what's on your mind. So let me bring that to you. <laughs> so you sitting in and watching TV and every guy that come on there, you commenting on him and this and that. Oh, that's what she got on her mind. So I know what to bring her. So the guy, you know, every female, I, okay, that's what you got on your mind. Okay. I know what to bring you. Okay. So a person, whatever your situation may be, it doesn't, I just use male and female because that's familiar. I love that. But I whatever that. we're thinking about. So he says, okay. So you know how sometimes when you come around people and it look like they just push your buttons. You know why? Because the enemy has already observed you. And know, know the things that you, you come on. So gonna I'm going to make family. that happen. But yeah. when we are strengthened and we keep our mind stayed on Jesus, that will keep us in perfect peace. When you come to push those buttons, they don't work anymore. Okay. Because now I've got my mind Science. in a different place. Uh, I've got my thoughts oh, yes. in a different place mm -hmm. because see, it's not what, what, what goes in is what comes out that defiles us. That's right. And he's looking at our reaction. And we, have, we are overcomers through the fact that if I get the word in me, then I become a living epistle. What did David say? The word that I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So therefore, when these things come... We start asking God, oh, I got to work with this person. Lord, change this person. I've got to deal with this. Change this person. No, go within yourself. Lord, change me. See, exactly. he doesn't change the situation. He changes you in the That's situation. Right. You want to know why you keep going through certain things over and over? Because he's trying to change you. And he's asking you to open your, your eyes, eyes and your understanding you. so that you can see that it's not about the timing is being delayed because you're not ready because he's not going to allow you to prosper beyond your soul. Exactly. Because he wants those things to, to work together. That's right. So therefore, All Lord, I need this together. and I want that and whatnot, but you can't handle it because as soon as I give it to you, you're going to forget all about me. That's right. So therefore I exactly. can't allow you to prosper beyond right. your soul mm -hmm. because you're going to put me down. Okay. We, we want and the he blessings. Know, he knows you. He know you. Yes. He know you. He are. knows us better than we know ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's why he puts us through the different things that we go through. That's why everybody's trial is different because it's tailor made for who you are. That's right. And where you are. That's right. Doesn't matter about whether you have a title or you a layman in the church. That's right. God knows everything about you. And exactly. whatever he allows you to go through is to bring you to a place. Sometimes we look yes. at things and it's so tragic. Ooh, yes. But God knows what's on your heart. Yes. And he's a jealous God. Yes. And he's not going to have anything before him. Yes. And I tell people all the time, be careful how you idolize your pastors and whatnot. It's okay to honor the men and women of God, God, but you don't make them a God. That's right. Nobody told you to Because you get them in trouble with God when mm -hmm. you do that. Yes, yes. And I, I just love the fact that he loves us so much that he takes time with each of us individually. Every man has to work out his own self, soul salvation, yes. and he's right there with us. He's working it out day by day. Right there say, with us. Let me say that song, One Day at a Time. One Day at a Time. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Jesus. That's right. And that's how we have to take it, one day at a time. I know uh, this morning when I was on the prayer line, and uh, I asked the uh, prayer warriors to pray for this family. Uh, this family, about eight members died. Um, and I think they lived in Maryland, but I guess the article or something is just the picture and the information is just reaching through, you know, the circuit of, of Facebook. They apparently the power company shut off their power and the father went out and bought, um, Kerosene. a little heater. Yeah. So through the night, every last one of them died through, uh, carbon monoxide poisoning. So when I just saw that picture of this, all the family on this little fan that they had, the father in the middle and seven children died. You look at that. And I was just thinking, I said, I was telling Ursula, sister Ursula, I said, I just don't know how the family uh, managed and found the strength to go to a funeral if they had eight caskets up there, or did they do 
two different uh, days or Saturdays to do it. Whatever happened is I just said, like, I just went to the funeral recently of the Welch sisters uh, on August 15th, and that was three up there. And I said, Lord, I just know that somebody would have had to be praying for this family if they had all the bodies up there or whatever happened and just to ask them to please still pray for that family because it's only happened three months ago. Just pray for, I said, still, I know the family is in more. Just pray for the family. And so you look at things like that, and I don't know why I went in that direction, but I just know that just reading that yesterday, my heart just goes out to even them just to know that God knew that's the way that all eight was going to leave here. God is in control, and uh, God is too wise to make a mistake. And we may not understand everything, but what we have to do is trust him. Yes. Trust him. And when I looked at that, and you saw of it course too? it was heartfelt. Yes. Um, yeah, it's, it's been out there for a while. Yes, yeah, yes. But it's heartfelt, but God knows best. For whatever his reasoning, if he put that family to rest, because now they don't have to suffer, they don't have to go anymore. The thing is, God knows when you're ready to be plucked from the garden. We don't know the hearts or the mindsets of that family, but obviously the father was trying to do the best that he could. He could. Yes. You know, and yes. there was many struggles there. So now he doesn't have to struggle anymore. And his children are with him. Are with him. They're safe. Yes. So, you know, and I look at the girls, uh, the Welch girls. Those yes. girls were on fire for the Lord. Oh, yes. But yes. in this generation, thank God for them. But there are so many young people think that it's the older people yes. that is happening too. That they're not going to leave here until years, years yes, later. That you're and get God old. used them for mm -hmm. an example to show mm -hmm. young people, this is what you have to strive for. This is why you have to have a relationship with me because you don't know where That's death right. lies. It's a hard task for the family, but they were used. Mightily. You know what? And, and evangelists, when you just mentioned that and started to interrupt, because when I heard of the tragedy with the car accident and all three girls uh, uh, died, there's one thing that just stays before me, the vision. I could see the car coming into their lane, and I could see... God, uh, Jesus saying, are you ready? And they said, yes. And immediately those spirits just emerged with the Lord, caught up in the air, just went and to be with the Lord because they all knew the Lord. And that's the way I saw that accident. Even though I saw the bodies at Lawson Funeral Home, the girls, when I just looked at them, I already just could see all three of them, spirits just be being lifted up to be with the Lord that day. And that's where they are now in the uh, Rose Garden with the Lord. That was that's their the way time. I see it. That yes, was the yes, ordained it, time yes. by God. That's you know, I think about this song that uh, this pastor sings with Twinkie Clark, and they were talking about his church members were in a van accident. Yes, okay. And uh, they're, all of them weren't, it wasn't fatal for all of them. And so the pastor asked the Lord, why did you take my best members? He said, the ones that survived, you know, it's some more in the <laughs> church. It's some more in the church that you could have taken. Okay, other but, than that. But you, he said, but you took my best members. And the Lord told him, well, first thing, they, we don't belong to any pastor. We belong to God. We belong and to he God. allows pastors to be the yes. shepherd over mm -hmm. those sheep. Yes. But he told him, he says, because they were ready. And I'm leaving those because you still need to work with them. Okay. See, so See? that's why we don't See? question him because in his you infinite don't. wisdom, yes. we just have to find peace it's in the knowledge of knowing yes. that all things happens. Uh, everything, everything happens and it all has nothing just happens that has not passed through the sovereign hand of God. And, and that's the one thing about that I always remember. No matter what happens. It has to go through his that's hands. That's right. Got to go through his hands. You know, in, in Second Peter, he's talking about that. He says, but don't forget this one thing, dear friends. To the Lord, a day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years is like a day. The Lord is not slow in doing what he promised. The way some people understand slowness. But God is being patient with us. He's giving us time to get it right. To get it together. He doesn't want anyone to be lost. Together. Oh, yes. He doesn't want anyone to be lost. So in his timing, he's allowing us opportunity, opportunity, chance, chance. Every time you wake up, 
You got another, another opportunity, opportunity. Another load of to benefits. To do the more Lord's grace work and mercy. And get it together. Get it right. Come on. Get things in order and whatever like that. He want everybody to change their ways and stop He's sinning. He's giving us another opportunity. Come on. Jesus. And e evangelists, um, I'm going to say this because you have led me to this and, and the Holy Spirit is reminding me to say that this on this broadcast today. When my brother uh, was diagnosed with uh, colon and liver cancer, all that he had, he, it was colon and then they opened him up and uh, it spread to other parts of the body. I remember last year, it was just last year, and I was praying fervently for my brother for the eight months that he lived after getting his diagnosis. So it's just like when we were talking a few minutes ago, they say God uh, hardened uh, Pharaoh's heart one time yet when he finally did it. And that's when he moved and eventually destroyed him and his men. But I was praying with, you know, sending them messages all the time. Jeffrey, pray, trust God, have faith. You could be the next one in line for a miracle. Uh, and, and then I said, most of all, forgive those who have spitefully used you, abused you, rejected you, bum, 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 all, all this I'm saying to him. And also ask God to forgive you for your sins and repent. And this is a, so he will text me back and just say, don't send me any more messages like this anymore. Don't want to hear anything about God at all. That's what he would tell me in his text. Mm -hmm. Don't be sending me no scriptures. Then when I tell him that I had pastors in the area where he lived in the Riverview area that I wanted to call and come by and pray with him, everything, he would say, well, they can call. I'll say hello. But if they want to pray, um, I'm hanging up. They can pray all they want on the phone. <laughs> you just think, okay, just con constantly a whole eight months. Every opportunity time I talked to him about the Lord, when he wasn't like that before he got his diagnosis, okay? He would listen, 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 say, sis, you're right. You know, I've not changed yet. I need to make changes. I'm not ready to change yet. So and when I do, I want to be all in all and real for God. So he continued like this. So then it came this one day in August. It should have been about August 7th or 8th because he died the following Friday. This one Friday, my brother called me. Oh, my brother couldn't even talk. He on the phone, like, talking a foreign language, like, yang, 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 just can't understand nothing he is saying at all. The phone will get disconnected. He'll call, the phone call, he calls right back again, or the Holy Spirit was dialing the number for him. Yang, 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 yang. He'll, he'll uh, the call, get, get disconnected. He'll call back again. Then the third time he called me by evangelist, <clears throat> the Holy Spirit, spoke through my brother and said these four words, these three words, pray for me. At that point, when I heard that, I knew that was God because mm -hmm. God was getting ready to take. And then when I heard his voice like that, I knew still he was getting ready to go because I had had another friend that had died many, many years ago of colon cancer. And that's the way she sounded when she had called me the before God took her. So when he did, I just knew it and I could hear it. And I was like, oh my gosh, oh my God. So the Holy Spirit spoke through my brother and said those three words, pray for me. All these eight months refusing prayer. I prayed, I prayed, prayed everything that I wanted to pray over him at that time. We got disconnected. He called back again. This point, he done went back to the mumbling, mumbling jumble. So that's it. So two days later, he's in hospice. So every night I went to hospice I, uh, the wife would leave and she'll say, do you want to stay here all night with him? Yes, I do. I'd be glad to. So every night I got a chance to pray over him because he was, uh, heavily sedated with the morphine and everything like that. And I'll say everything. So this one night came on a Thursday night and I said, this night I'm going to pray a prayer of release. So I got up like 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock at midnight, prayed over him. I said, Jeffrey, Jeffrey. It is okay for you to go. I say, listen, mother, I said, we're going to miss you terribly, but mother is waiting on you. She hasn't seen you in 50 years. I said, because she was six when he died. So he's 56 at this point. So I said, she hasn't seen you in 50 years, Jeffrey. She is waiting on you. So now for three days, 
he been in his deep, deep sedation, never opened his eyes. But when I said that, oh my gosh, them eyes popped open. And he sat up there. He, he just looked at me, and then I knew then. I said, he heard what I said. So I finished, finished on praying a, a prayer over him and everything like that. And I can just tell this, say this truly, because this is why this this uh, radio broadcast today is ordained by God with my guest being Evangelist uh, Jones, that I just want to share this for those who are going to be listening to this local, national, and international, is the fact that <clears throat> a few hours later, I was able to see with my very own eyes, my spiritual eyes, the spirit depart from that body and leave that room. And I give God the honor, praise, and glory. And a few hours, a few hours later, the physical body started uh, shutting down. But I was able to see the departure of my brother from that very room. Looked at just like him, walked like him. He was whole, healthy, and just opened the door and left the room. I give God the honor, the praise, and glory. What I was able to witness, because God is so true. He honored those prayers. He just, he let me know I got this. And even in, even though my brother may have not, we say we may not deserve that in the end, God was faithful to let me know through your faithfulness. Okay. I got him. It's okay. You don't have to worry. Mm -hmm. I got my hands on him. Okay. And he is going to be okay. So I just want to share that because this for whoever out there listening today to let you know that God is faithful. You may Amen. see like you're not making no progress with them, but God is faithful. In the end, God let me know. I didn't have to wonder where he is, what's going to happen. Did he make it? Did he receive it? God let me see everything with my own spiritual eyes. Praise God. I just have to say that. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> On that note, uh, Isaiah 40 and 3, it says, But those who trust in the Lord will become strong again. They will be like eagles that grow new feathers. They will run and not get weak. They will walk and not get tired. And in that scripture, it gives me such encouragement because God does answer our prayers. Sometimes it's not on this side. That's right. But he renews their strength and they mount up like eagles because they have been restored. Yes. And sometimes it's because they go home. And sometimes he keeps them here. That's right. He but does. the point is, God's word is faithful, is tried, and is true. And it's not going to change. I don't care what laws they pass. I don't care what issues come up in the government. God's law stands firm. That's right. It stands firm. And when we trust in the Lord, if we lose our life, but because we're going to be with him, then we have not lost. We're We've gained. not lost anything. Yes, We've right. gained. And to be my, absent from the body is to be with the Lord if you know the Lord. Amen. Oh, and, and that's the key, to know him. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is all about, is to know him in the pardoning of your sins. It doesn't matter what you've done, where you've been, where you come from. None of that matters except right now. You have an opportunity to get it right. This is the timing. Now is the acceptable time to give our lives over to Christ, humbly submitting before him yes. and allowing him to mold and shape us yes. and to take out those things that are not acceptable to him and pour in his spirit yes. so that we yes. become the living epistles that when people see Princess Denise, they can read the word through her actions. When they see Evangelist Jones, they can read the word through my actions, not what I say, but what I do. Exactly. I tell people, you can give good advice. But a good example will take me home. That's right. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Now, today, we really have imparted a word. God has just used us mightily. Before Evangelist Jones arrived here today, she already had a made-up mind. I am going to speak about the Lord God Almighty and His goodness, His grace, and His mercy. I'm going to open my mouth and let God speak through me to share a word to the radio listeners out there today to let them know that God is good and God is good all the time. God is omnipotent. God is faithful. 
God will see us through anything. No matter what happens, no matter what it looked like, never ever stop trusting in God. God will see you through no matter what. God got your back. Yes. God, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the word of the Lord. He'll bring you through. We could go on and on about it. But today, we just wanted to share with you about what happens and what will happen in God's perfect, perfect timing. timing. It will. God got it. God got it. You, you, I mean, he had your blueprint already for you. Even he sent you here for the number of years that you're supposed to be here. It's already the whole spirit got the instructions and trying to warn you, trying to instruct you, counsel you, teach you, lead you, guide you as much as you will let it do that. Because you, you know when you've heard the voice and you put it on the bike burner. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know I shouldn't. But however, I just can't help myself. I got to do this just one more time. Okay. But you don't already be warned from the beginning. And God still blesses you the next day, no matter what you did that day, to see another day in many, in many instances that he allow you to still have the blessings of God the very next day by waking you up and giving you another opportunity to see another day. So it, uh, uh, evangelists and I could sit here for 10 hours talking about <laughs> God's goodness, but we know we don't have the time to sit here another 10 hours to do that. But we know that when we depart from each other today, where we go, we're going to be lifting up the name of Jesus. Yes. We will be representing Jesus Christ, uh, uh, God as ambassadors of Christ this, through this very day. Anything closing you'd like to add? No, I was just say that, as I said <laughs> in the beginning, it's a posture that we have to be in a position. And when God, when we position ourselves, God will use us. He will bless us. He will continue to keep us and strengthen us. But we have to be in a position of humility and commitment. I've committed my life to you, Lord. And I may waver or things may get hard. And, and in my mind, I may feel like giving up, but I won't give up. And and, and I'm not saying that it's you going to get save and give your life to the Lord. But you don't have many moments happen, of little away. weary. Uh, no. just, uh, but what happens <clears throat> is we have to stay focused. Yes. It says they who keep their mind on him, he keeps them in perfect peace. Yes, And I tell you, it works. It, it works. works. Prayer it works. works. And only, and in closing, I just want to remind you all, this is something I <clears throat> pretty much uh, say all the time, and this is what I live by. Only what you do for Christ Bless. only now what you do for Christ It's not what I do for what I do for evangelist Jones, uh, Bishop Judy, sister Ursula, just naming a few of my sisters in Christ only for what I do for Christ. It's going to last and be counted in the end. Now you can do things for people just for show. If I had not did this for her, she wouldn't, uh, her lights wouldn't be on the day. If I hadn't did this for her, her and her children would not be eating today. The stuff that people, if I hadn't let her borrow $200, uh, she wouldn't have been able to get that car. Whatever the things that people say all the time when they do stuff for people so they can go out and tell others if it hadn't been for them. But I just want to tell you today, my brothers and sisters in Christ, only what you do for Christ is going to last. The other stuff, it don't amount to a hill of beans. But only what you do for Christ is going to last and be counted in the end. Now, God bless you throughout this day, throughout the week. And keep God first in everything that you do. Give him the honor, praise, and glory. And be blessed to the Lord until we come back again before you with another radio broadcast ministry of Matters of the Heart with your radio host, Princess Denise Wright.